All right, so um, the last slide that was fun. Gents, thanks for starting that chant. I really, I got a kick out of that. Every time I go, this is the 30th. 30th? But is that point guard though? Yeah. That they have a ladle? Oh, okay. She's a four star. Wait, have you seen her play? I beat her one on one. Okay, just just because you poked her in the yeah. eye before you started. Yeah. I mean, you got a kid who's committed to uh, Stanford as a, as a sophomore, now as a junior. You know her boyfriend? He's a. Where's Ben? That's not here. Cool. All right. So, uh, kind of simple notes. I, I, sorry, I gave you the PowerPoint for the notes, and I didn't. Send it to me, so I have to go old school. Pen and pen. All right, so let's do these notes quick or for for us. So a few things I want to make sure you all get is a piece of advice that was given me a long, long time ago when I was in, actually in high school, and it was the only high school teacher that I thought was like the greatest teacher in the world. Um, his name was Dr. Wells. He was actually my physics teacher, and he knew that I was looking to go into engineering, but he said, Chris, no matter what you do, continue to take math classes and statistics classes until you don't know how to do it anymore. And also, I got a degree in it, so I guess I figured out how to do it. Um, and that really resonated with me. But the one I was so happy that he had influenced me to continue taking was, was statistics, just because Statistics is, it's really dirty, rotten, horrible math. Okay, not because it's hard to do, it's because people are too stupid to understand what it means. Okay, they'll sit there, I mean, I could, I could, take, I could take a quarter and flip it and say, hey, if I flip this quarter a hundred times and I get 99 heads and one tails, would you bet that I would get heads again? Oh, yeah, man, have more often. No, there's outcomes that always take place. The quarter doesn't remember what it flipped last. They do the same thing in Vegas with statistics. When, if you're ever walking through a casino, you see these boards up around, usually around roulette tables, and it says what the last marble outcome was. On roulette, you have... Uh, 1 to 36, you also have 0, and you have a double 0. So there's 30 th 38 outcomes that could take place, and they post the last 50 outcomes. Why did they do that? And of those outcomes, they're saying red versus black, even versus odd. There's all this information. So people walk by, oh, man, look, there's seven reds in a row. I'm going to bet black. No, the marble doesn't remember. But they, they put it out there, and we used to call them idiot boards because that's really – who should, who's betting on it? And there's a reason why those casinos um, build as rapidly as they do. Now, um, I had the opportunity to um, hang out with a guy who was a pretty high roller when I lived in Vegas. He was a guy taught, the guy cr that taught across the hall from me, his name's George Maddy. His brother in law was. A craps fanatic. Craps is the game that you roll the dice in. And so George called me and said, Stirrup, you got to come out with us tonight. The long and the short of it, I get over to George's place. This guy's got $43,000 in cash laid out on the floor. And he's on his hands and knees and he's counting stacks. And I'm like, dude, you hit big. He goes, no, I'm about $26,000. Who carries this kind of money? Just about. Um, so we go and we roll. He 
he wants me to roll craps for him, which is great. And we are so basically we started at one casino. He's badgering the people. We get a free meal. They comp us the Rolls Royce limousine for the night, which is unbelievable. Uh, we go pick up a couple other teachers, and uh, we're just hanging out with this guy. He just has stupid money. But we get to the – we wind up at <coughs> Caesar's Palace, and when you're in a Rolls Royce limo, there's an entrance for you, and then there's everyone else's entrance. So we walk in to the high roller area, and Dennis Rodman – Charles Barkley are sitting at a blackjack table. <laughs> and we're walking in, we go over to the craps table. We walk over to the biggest craps table I've ever seen. It was like from this wall to that wall. It was huge. So I'm standing at the far end. The guy's like, Guy Stark, you're going to throw the bones for me. And when he said throw the bones, that meant roll the dice. And I looked, and at the far end of this table was the most beautiful woman I had ever seen in my life. <laughs> and I'm just going to tell you that. Next the, to your wife, right? I, you no, know, she'd probably say that too. Nah. <laughs> I will tell you that the largest piece of material on this woman's outfit was probably the washing pad um, to tell you how to dry clean only. I'm just, I'm just trying to fill you in. On, I'm just trying to fill you in. Now, my buddy George is like, dude, dude, stir up, stir up, check it out. You know who that is up front of the table? I'm like, uh uh. He goes, dude, it's Tommy Lee from Motley Crue. Lee's a drummer for Motley Crue. Well, I look, he's like, dude, it's Tommy. Well, Tommy at the time was married to Pamela Anderson. And that's who I was. <laughs> so, if you don't know who that is, look it up. Watch Borat. Huh? If you don't know who that is, just watch Borat. So, anyhow, regardless, after that night, after that, we go get down to uh, New York, New York. It's about 2 30, maybe 3 o'clock in the morning. Guy walks up to a craps table, no one's at, and he goes, how much does it secure the table? The second guy says, if you drop 30000 on this table, you can have it for half an hour, meaning no one else can come to the table. It's our table for the half hour. I rolled. So the numbers that you win in craps are 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So if you, if you bet on any of these numbers, and these happen to come up before a 7 comes up, um, you win. So he's got $30,000 split amongst here, and each time one of these hits, he's pressing it. At one point, when the 10, the 10 doubles your bet, he had $7,000 sitting just on the 10 alone. Okay? I rolled 31 times in a row hitting one of those numbers. They cashed him out at $243,000. Oh, <laughs> you, you did that? You got a cut of that, huh? That was my roll, 31. I didn't that. win money. I won him the money. Yeah, but he gave you a cut of that. Dude, I got to hang out with Pam and Tommy. Charles and Rodman were in the house. Very true. So, you yeah, know, no, it's like that one. we were in a Rolls Royce. I mean, come on. Coke and Jerry and Ben Bolt. That's all there. That's all it was, yeah. Ginger ale, yeah. You know, bottle of water. Actually, it was just a glass of water with a little ice in it. So, so needless to say, with that kind of statistics, I had this strange anomaly that I was able to roll this many times and win, walk away from the table that this guy won this much money, which is crazy. And that's, that's, that's the probability part of statistics. But the part of statistics that we're going to focus on is doesn't always deal with Rolls Royces and Dennis and, and Barkley, but it, it deals with the normal curve. And I know we talked about a little bit of this yesterday, but the normal curve really is how outcomes take place. And the normal curve, if you were to take a pair of dice and you were to roll the dice a continuous amount of times, you would eventually get to a normal curve where the very center of that is a 7, and on either side of the 7 is a 6 and the 8, and it would spread all the way out. And basically, you could find the probability of going 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 on here, where the furthest outliers are the, getting a 2 and getting a 12. That's, you know, and then everything in between. But let's talk about how this data works off your guys' worksheet. So I said yesterday this is our mean. Agreed? 
And then we have standard deviations in each direction. This is like a weird, it's not a six. It's a Greek letter phi. Standard deviation. Yeah, standard deviation. And then each of these regions contained a certain amount of our data as far as a percent. And for the most part, this normal curve is drawn correctly. They do round these to whole numbers for you guys to make it easier. But if you live off these being whole numbers forever, you're probably going to be just fine in life. And you notice it's symmetric about the mean. Agreed? I mean, I could fold it over onto itself. And then over here is 0.15. And then over here is... Okay, so that's how we're going to walk through this. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the z-score. And a z-score is where is it falling as far as like a standard deviation that's not an actual increment. Like this is one standard deviation, this is two. But what happens here or here? Well, that's where the z-score comes in. Okay, so the z-score is x minus, and I forget which symbol it is. This is a mu. That's... That's the mean, okay? And then over your standard deviation, okay? So everything up here is stuff that you might know about. So let's flip to the back side of that page and talk about those, okay? So I just made up this problem. This has nothing to do with any particular classes, but let's say a test is given to all students in a school district, shows a normal curve. The mean is a 78%, so the average square is a 78 or 0.78. Standard deviation is 6%, which is 0.06. Fill in the data with this normal curve. Okay. So what is my mean? Yeah, so it's up to you. If you want it as a percent, great. If you want it as a decimal, it doesn't really matter to me. I'll just keep it as percents because I think you would understand a 78% is like a upper C. Agreed? Okay, and then we have a standard deviation of 6%. And this is as simple as it is. So if I go one standard deviation this way, I'm going to add 6% to that, so I get to 84%. And then I take a second standard deviation this way, I get to 90%. And then I get a third, a, a third standard deviation over here, I get to a 96%. So some of you might be going, how'd you get that? I went 78 plus 6% plus 6% plus 6%. Okay, if I'm going to go this way, I'm going to subtract, so I get a 72% is one standard deviation to the negative direction. And the negative two standard deviations take another 6%, so I get to 66%. And if I go one more to the negative three standard deviations, I get to a 60%. Okay? Now, does that mean the lowest grade was a 60%? No. Does that mean the highest grade is a 96%? No. No. There are far out liars. Are there people that might have gotten better than a 96%? Yes. Are there people that might have gotten lower than a 60%? Yeah. Well, the thing is with data, it will happen. Okay? So, the next thing we're going to say is, hey, we want to find this z-score. <laughs> so, if a person scored a 65%, so the first thing you do is you look, you say, okay, does that 65% match up exactly with any of these numbers. It's close here, right? But it's not quite. So it's about right here. Agree? So that's where the 65% lives. But we're not interested in 65%. We're looking at the z-score, and the z-score is going to tell us exactly how many standard deviations we are away. So if you have a calculator, it would be great because I can't do it in my head. So I'm going to take my observed score, 65%, minus my my mean, which is 78%, divided by my standard deviation, which was what? 6%? Now let's just ignore the percent signs for a second. 65 subtract is 70. How much? That's what? 65 minus 78 is what? Negative what? Negative what? Negative 13? Over 6? So what is negative 13 over 6? Negative 2.111. 2.111. Okay? So that, 
one, two, six. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. That's a six? Yeah. Okay. Negative 2.16. Okay. So, so does this make sense for me to say that this score here, the 65%, is more than two standard deviations below my average? Does that make sense with that number? So that makes sense about there? That's really all it means. You're just saying, hey, where are you falling on this? And there's other things you can you do, but you have other courses that go. But then let's figure out the same thing with the person who scored a 97%. So we're going to do the z-score of that. So we're going to get 97 minus 78 over 6. So a 97% is like over here, right? So I'm going to tell you my number should be 3 point something. So what's 97 minus 78? 3.166. Agree? <coughs> so is that more than there more than three standard deviations above the average? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So notice the 97% has a positive answer and the 65% has a negative answer. The positive means you're on the right side of the average. The negative answer means you're on the left side of the answer. That's all it means. Okay. So then it asks, uh, asks us this question. It says, hey, what percent of the test were above an 84%? Okay, so you don't need this picture other than realizing that was one standard deviation above, yes? Okay, so let's go back to our thing. We're one standard deviation above, so we're here, right? Did I go to the right one? I'm right here, 84, one standard deviation. So I'm right here. So what's the area this way? Well, I could add up 34, 34, 13.5, 2.35, and 0 0.15. That'd be fine. Or I could add up these numbers and subtract from 100. Which way is the right way to do it? I, your choice. So somebody, let's see, 13.5, 2.35. Uh, let's see what that's going to give me. I have a 0. Carry the 1, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Carry the 1. So that's uh, 16. 16, thank you. So that means that 16%, so it asks for what percent did better than the 84%? Well, 16% did. This was coincidental that 100% minus 84%, 16. But that's what this one means. What percent of the scores are 90% are or higher? Well, let's go back here. 90% is right here. Okay? So 90% is the second standard deviation. Okay, so if I want to go higher, I'm going to go 2.35 plus 0.15. So that should be 2.50. So 2.5% of the people did better than a 90%. And then the last one, how many people wound up between the 80 and the 90? Can you answer the question without doing anything? What's the area of this region? What's the area of this region? 13.5, yeah. Okay. Now, what if I wanted to say, hey, how many people got between the average and here? Well, I'm going to add 34 and 13.5. Okay, so that's all I have on stats for you now. We good? Um, I would say I would like to tomorrow go over, I'd like to go over page 225, so it's uh, stats C. And I, would, I guess I'd think uh, try number one. Okay. I think that would be good for tomorrow, but I'm not done. Let's go to Smurfville. Anything on here you want to talk about? How long are you going to be here after school? Today? Uh, I have the girls tournament today. Tomorrow I don't have the girls tournament. Friday I have the girls tournament. But tomorrow is the only time I'm here after school. Do you help with the girls basketball? Or what? Yeah, I'm game manager for boys and girls basketball. You what class are you in here during set? Yeah, I'm in here for. So what do you got? What are we doing? What are you doing? Can we do you? 
Thursday tomorrow after school, I'm there for you. Is that cool? Can we do Unit 6, one of the factory? Mm. Unit 6. Yeah, can you? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Unit 6. No. What number are you looking at? Um, 22 through 26. I'm your boss. Okay. So this is off of Unit 6. 26? Yeah. So I get x squared plus 7x minus 30. Units. Oh, that's unit five. Unit six, what one? What the heck is unit six? Yeah, what the heck? Unit, oh, unit six, number what? 26. There we go. So, unit six, 26. 26. 6x to the fourth. Plus 12x squared minus 90 equals zero. They want us to factor completely and find all the zeros. First thing I would recognize is I could divide everything by 6. That's not going to influence my answer at all. I just know that if I do this, I'm going to get x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus, let's see, 115. Did I do that right? And then I got, uh, what do I do? I got x squared, x squared. So what two numbers multiply to give me negative 15, add to give me positive 2. I'd say positive 5 and negative 3. So if I set each of those equal to 0, I get this. Root both sides. So that's going to give me x equals plus or minus i root 5. So what kind of roots are those? It, no, they're not irrational. They are imaginary or compound or complex. And then this one, set it equal to 0. Take the root of both sides. x equals plus or minus root 3. Those are irrational roots. Those cross the x-axis. Those don't. Is that good? Can we do 25? 25, same page? Yeah. Now that I found it. 25, same page. Sam, what two numbers do I multiply together to give me positive 18 multiply together to get you negative 11? I think it's got to be going to be x squared minus 2, x squared minus 9. x squared minus 2 would break down to x equals plus or minus root 2. x squared minus 9 breaks down to x plus 3, x minus 3. Make sense? Yeah. Uh oh. I don't know. Unit five. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. No, number forty-four. You can't see the graph. So all that one is on number forty-four is you have a parabola. Do you want to see one that's similar to it? I could make up a problem for that. No, you're. Mm -hmm. oh. This is Justin. This is Justin. Six and seven. Six and seven. Six and seven. Yeah. Two. Four. Unit six. Problem number six. We have the function at x is equal to negative five x to the fourth minus two x minus seven. Okay, so the degree has to be 4 because, is this the right one? Okay. And then, then we said as x approaches negative infinity, the function at x goes to that. And then as x goes to positive infinity, function at x goes to where? So we have to kind of be aware what this graph looks like. It's to the fourth power, so both ends are going to go to the same place. And it's a negative, it's going to look like this. So as x goes to negative infinity, so as I go there, it's going down, so that's going to negative infinity. As x goes to positive infinity, going that way, it's also going to negative infinity. 
unless you're taking the polynomial part on the test, on the capstone test, and it's like, it falls to the right. That's what that was done. Like, that was that you, you sh the arguments we were in going, why are we not doing this? Oh, it's too hard for kids. Maybe your kids that you teach, our kids got it. Huh? Eagle Crest and Smoky Hill and Cherokee Trail were adamantly against us doing that. That's too difficult for kids to comprehend. Like, um, we've been teaching it this way for about 50 years. And, and we have the highest test scores in the state, so. So. What? Seven. Right, great one. Yeah, let's look at seven. So it's a degree three. That makes sense so far? Yeah. So being it's like that, it's going to look something like this as far as a picture. So as I go to negative infinity, this goes to negative infinity. As I go to positive infinity, this goes to positive infinity. <laughs> <laughs> is it what? Like, so why it, does it start on the left and like go up to the right instead of like just So if, if I had a 4x to the third, same problem. This would flip flop like this. So like the matter? I think I can answer this to give you an aha moment. If I were to say n behavior or the ends of the graph, that means we're not really worried about the way we're going to go, right? Does that make sense? That's just a line, agree? Do you agree that that's to the first power? So if I were to graph this, this is going to look like this. Agreed? Yeah. Now, ignoring the middle here, Ignoring the middle there, you see where the ends are going. Yeah. All right, ready? The ends of this are doing that same thing, where it's doing this. See how the ends are? Yeah. X to the fifth looks like that. X to the seventh looks like that. OK. Now, let's take that one step further. What does this graph look like? Is it still a line? It's still a line, right? This one has a slope that does this. So again, ignoring what's happening in the middle, if I have y equals negative x to the third, that's going to look like this. See how the ends? That's the way to remember it. And then if it's to an even number, it's either both doing this, or if it's negative, they're both doing that. So if they're both positive, they're both going up to infinity. If it's a negative on my lead, both are going to negative. Okay. Yeah, good question. What else we got? Where where are we at? Where? Unit six, four, five? Yeah. Oh, dude. Well, that's okay. I don't think you need to. So number four, we're using synthetic division, so we're going to divide by two. And we have negative one, four, negative five, and one. Uh, we don't have any breaks. Good. All right. So negative one. That's negative two. That's two. That's four. That's negative one. That's negative two. Oh, we did get a zero. Yeah. Did I do all right? And then number five, same thing. Wait, one minus two. Oh, that's negative one. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm glad. Glad someone's paying attention in here. Lord knows your teacher. There you go. Does that work better for you? Okay. And then number five, same way. So number five, synthetically divide. I got four, one, negative three, and six. Yeah. You're done. I wouldn't go any further. Uh, and then that's, oh shoot, what am I dividing by? I'm dividing by one, right? All right. So four comes down, four times one, that's five. Five, that's two, eight. Did I do that right? Yeah. Okay. Do you know number five? <laughs> Where did those numbers come from? Dude. <laughs> 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 
They said it was a real chocolate brownie. I didn't know what that meant, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> things we heard in math class. Stuart was eating brownies. Was that sarcasm? <laughs> It's going to be like the last three units, right? Correct. It's the beginning of the year. Right. So, why would so like the easy stuff and then also the really hard stuff. Exactly. Sure. Wait, sir, are you done with that problem? Or is it yeah, I'm done. I wouldn't so go any further. Can you circle the two headed figures? Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe we're looking for this. If they ask for the remainder, we're doing this. If it says, hey, use synthetic division to solve this. Being it's a multiple choice, there's really not a whole heck of a lot I can ask. I could ask you, hey, if I use that, what do I get? Well, I get 15. I'm not going to say, hey, what would the third column number be? Uh, Are we going to have wood problems on this? I, you won't. Sick. We'll just give you a box of crayons. Yeah. <laughs> there be any of on wood? Uh, I would, uh, I, well, again, it's going to be on multiple choice, so I can't imagine you would see... Too much long division, that's extensive. I mean, was anything on here long division? No. Maybe there was one or two. Uh, it's some a difference. Oh, Might not see it. Are we going to have one of those questions like we had on the last time where it's like find the V of X? You mean the one that it was the summer difference of two cubes and we wanted yeah. to find the B value? I'm not going to do a trick question. I hate that question on that test too. Yeah. I don't want to give you guys the equation. And they're like, well, the kids should know what the signs are. No, they're looking at it. I had a kid during my eighth grade class. When I do on the capstone, I'm going, Mr. Stewart, this, is, this formula right here is wrong. I'm like, without giving away the answer, I'm like, I, I know that. X plus, or A plus B, A squared plus AB plus B squared. I know it's wrong. It has one sign error. But of course, they wouldn't write it saying, hey, there is a sign error. Hey, please take note. No, we got to... You gotta help the kids at Eagle Crest and Cherokee Trail because they get really confused. So we're just not gonna have a question like oh. that on the test. Or I wouldn't give you that one, no. I might, I might ask you to do this. Say, hey, which, which of these is the correct answer? And so I'd have x plus five, uh -oh. x squared plus or minus. I already made a mistake. Let's stuck my head. Minus five x plus twenty five. And then I'd say, hey, is this one right? And then, or is this one right? So I would probably do that saying which one's right. And of course, I would make that a test right there. And it's this, this is the correct answer here because if you go plus plus minus plus, if it's if this was a minus, the difference is you get x minus five, x squared plus five x plus twenty five. So plus plus minus plus minus minus plus plus. And I don't know any other way to memorize it. I'd say the nice thing is, is if you get to that problem and you still have a boatload of time left, and you're like, dude, I just can't remember that formula because I'm a human being and I forget things. Well, I would do this. Um, this times this is x to the third, yay. This times this is 5x, yay. This times this is 25x. Or, yeah, 25x. That should be 5x squared, sorry. 
And then minus 5x squared minus 25x minus 125. Well, that cancels that. That cancels that. That leaves me x to the third minus 125. How many questions do you each have? <laughs> More than one, less than 100. So about 50 maybe? I don't remember. Sorry. I wish I had all the answers for you. It's enough that would fit on a front, a part of a back of a scantron. And not the ones that you see in science. The scantron's this big where, you know, you have to clear out, like, floor space so the kids can use it because it's so big. I'm talking, I'm talking about this one. Which, I think it's a 50 on the front side. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a 50 plus. Sure. Um, on the Doesn't impact the zero at all, it just impacts the end behavior. So it just makes it go from this to this or this to this. So easy to cheat on. I know you take your chapstick, you rub it down the right side of it on the work. And yeah, it ruins the scantron machine too. Man, I should do it. Yes. I saw that on Instagram. I feel like they probably though? catch you. Number 20, you said? Yeah. What does it do? It gives it a perfect score, and then it jams up the machine and won't grade anymore. So it's pretty <laughs> easy to catch the kid who did it. <laughs> well, then you get a zero. Yeah, but that was an effort. We caught a girl. We caught a girl in uh, Nevada. She was in my math studies math class. She was in my wife's. Um, IB chemistry class, and in her English class, she did it, and they were seeking expulsion because it was the third time they caught her doing that. Oh! And the parents lawyered up, and the lawyer's like, "Well, she didn't know. There's no directions to say you can't put chapstick along the edge." <laughs> and you're just looking, going, "There's nothing on here that doesn't say I can't stab the person in front of me, in, you know, in the back of the neck with my pencil." But kids know not to do that as well. So. All right, so Riley, I just need to know that this is going to look similar to this as far as my ends go. And then this minus 3 is down here. So I'm going to put a dot there. Yeah, so it just kind of does something like this. The 19? So that means this one's going to look like this. And so it's going to go right through here. So it's uh, like, something like that. Okay, I was under the impression of the 135. So apparently, if we don't write out all the rules, you can get away with it. Sounds good to me. I'm going to start joking with the bank for the test. The Russian. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know how they, they dope for the Olympics? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do for this test, even though it's not. You're going to take drugs? <laughs> you, you're going you, to take out a pint of blood, study really hard, and then have put the pint of blood back in you so you, so yeah. you have oxygen rich blood. They're like, yeah, but it's not cold. I know. You guys ever go down to that Olympic trial grounds down there in the spring where all of their toilets have a filter that if anyone uses their toilet, they can protect any type of illegal drug? I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> that's an invasion of privacy. See that, that's why you use the toilet in the Olympic gas I guess you kind of lose out on a right or two. I usually do. That's bad. Just imagine if we had those sensors on our toilets here. Uh, I don't know. Not at this school. I mean, other schools I've heard have, have problems with certain drugs. All right, please. No. Don't we have a lot of kids with low key babies? No. <laughs> low key. They have low key babies. I huff blue and paint. <laughs> yeah, but like everyone does it. Some Me too. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> He's got a sock in his hands. What? Front dead and gasoline. <laughs> All right, we good for today? Yeah. All right, you guys know I want you to work on somewhere, somewhere in there. Yeah. Cool. Everyone happy?